Good afternoon, everyone. The first item of business is Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body Questions. Uh, I'll try and get through them all, uh, but time is tight, so short questions and answers would be useful. Question number one, Mark Ruskell. Thank you, Presiding. Um, to ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it will work with Sodexo to improve the Food for Life catering mark in the garden level restaurant from bronze to silver. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I share Mr Ruskell's ambition to gain uh, silver status. The Garden Level Restaurant was awarded the Soil Association's Food for Life catering mark in May 2015, achieving the bronze level. As part of our reaccreditation in 2016, we began to investigate further the possibility of obtaining the silver level. The work is ongoing at present, and we're working closely with Sodexo. We do hold a number of other important accreditations, including the Healthy Living Award Plus, the Marine Stewardship Council for Sustainable Food, the Red Tractor Status, the British Lion Quality Mark for Free Range Eggs, Triple Certified Coffee and RSPCA Freedom Food. Mark Ruskell. Uh, can I thank David Stewart for that response. Um, today, of course, is International School Meals Day. Uh, we have 20 million uh, Food for Life meals being served annually in Scotland, many of which are in our schools. I know that one of the challenges about moving up through the Food for Life programme is in terms of allocating enough budget for ingredients. So perhaps the corporate body in Sodexo might like to take some advice from our schools in Scotland that are doing some excellent work. In fact, I know a number of uh, schools that have actually reached the gold standard and have got high levels of uh, ethically sourced ingredients uh, and even organic ingredients in school meals menus. And of course, they're working to a very tight budget. Dave Stewart. I think uh, Mr Ruskell makes some excellent points about looking at best practice. I'll ask officials to liaise closely with schools to look at the work they've carried out. As members will be aware, to achieve the silver award, there's a requirement to produce more organic produce. We're looking very closely at this, but I would welcome any best practice from any member in the chamber today. Question number two, John Mason. Hey, thank you. To ask the corporate body what plans it has to make the online payslip service more user-friendly, and easier to access. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the EHR online payslip service was originally introduced in 2010 to ensure that payslips are readily accessible to members, member staff, and SPCB staff on an on-demand basis. This has provided enhanced security along with environmental benefits such as saving paper and significant cost savings. We of course welcome user feedback on this and supplementary systems are based on previous user feedback. An upgrade was completed in 2015, making it easy for users to reset their own password on an automated self-service basis to avoid delays to access out with normal business hours. John Mason. I, th I thank the member for that reply. However, it used to be that the onus was on the employer or parliament to get the payslip to the staff member employee. Now the onus has been switched to the staff member to go and look for it. And I mean, I have met staff members who have just given up because the system is so hard and they have not seen their payslip for months and months. I think it does raise the wider question too of whether the IT system is there to serve us or we are there to serve the IT system. We've lost, the, well, previously we lost the business bulletins, we've lost the committee papers, and now we've lost payslips. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officers. It would perhaps be useful if I spell out what the current position is for hard copies. A hard copy payslip and P60s are issued to the home addresses of those users who do not have online access, for example, users on a career break, long-term sick, maternity leave, and MSP pensioners. We've no plans to change our current system, but I will ask officials to contact Mr Mason directly to be as helpful as possible to try and resolve this problem. Question number three, Mike Rumbles. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it will consider sending hard copies of pay slips to members and staff on request. David Stewart. Um, I, thank you, President Officer. As I identified earlier in my previous answer, uh, we do, of course, have a system for hard copy uh, pay slips on P60, but as I identified in my previous answer, they're issued to users on a career break, long term sick leave, maternity leave, and members in receipt of a pension. Mike Rumbles. It's not often I agree with John Mason. <laughs> but I raise this because not only myself and other MSPs, but actually more importantly, it's our members of staff. They have, as John rightly just said, because I was raising the same issue, they've given up. They don't access their payslips anymore. And it's, it's really an issue. John said, you know, it used to be. Actually, the legal, the law, 
and I remind, gently remind the corporate bodies, the law is that, uh, employment law is that this is a requirement for employers to provide a pay slip to their employees. It's not happening. So I'm not asking to change the system. I don't want to change the paperless system as for everybody, but for those people who have a problem, please, could they simply ask for a hard copy or even a PDF to be sent to them? Uh, thank you, uh, President Officer. I I'm obviously sorry that Mr Rambles' staff and indeed other members appear to be having difficulties with our EHR online pay, pay slip service. Uh, I'll arrange for a senior member of staff to meet Mr Rambles as soon as possible to resolve this problem. I, I am advised by officials that we are currently complying with the law as far as pay slips are concerned, but perhaps Mr Rambles could contact me directly if this, not, if this matter is not concluded as soon as possible. Um, I think someone else will get a shot now of answering questions, Mr Stewart. Question number four, Christine Graham. Uh, to ask the Scottish Parliament corporate body, in light of exhibition spaces being oversubscribed, whether it will consider having a third exhibition space in the garden lobby area. Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. And I uh, recognise that this is an issue of concern uh, for Christine Graham and in, in the past, and indeed was the subject of earlier written parliamentary questions. As I said in response to those questions, however, there are no other suitable spaces in the garden lobby or elsewhere to support an additional member-sponsored exhibition space, which would also have uh, other resource implications. Clearly, as someone who's made excellent use uh, of member-sponsored exhibitions, Christine Graham will uh, know how popular these are. Nevertheless, she will be equally aware uh, that there are other ways that members can support organisations to share information and network with members, for example, by holding a member-sponsored event. Uh, it may also be helpful for Christine Graham and indeed other colleagues uh, if I confirm that bids for member-sponsored exhibitions uh, for the period September to December 2017 will open next month. Christine Graham. Uh, I thank the member for his reply. However, I'm not happy because um, the book six months in advance is already a putative queue for the period September to December. So if the member can't tell me now, I hope he will respond by, as a lady, to tell me which spaces have been dismissed. Because it seems to me there could very well be one more in the garden lobby or possibly one at the top of the stairs area, that area around there, which would not impede parliamentary business. So I'd be obliged if he knows, it would be good to know which places have been dismissed or, uh, or to come later with that answer. Liam MacArthur. I thank Christine Graham for that and I'll certainly ensure that the information uh, that uh, she's asked for is provided uh, to her uh, at a later date. I think uh, as she will uh, appreciate not least in her role as Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, space within the building uh, can be under, uh, uh, under considerable demand at, at key periods. I think within the garden lobby in particular it's used by a great number of, of building users but I think the uh, request she's made in terms of more detail on the, on the spaces that have been looked at and the reasons why uh, those have, uh, have been uh, rejected is a perfectly reasonable one, and I'll ensure she's uh, provided with that information. A supplementary from Elaine Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In the spirit of supporting International Women's Day, would the SPCB give consideration to a specific exhibition space, perhaps in the front lobby, to celebrate women? And to put this request in context, last night at the women's dinner, I was told there are more memorials to animals than women in Edinburgh. And I was also made aware of a project about Edinburgh women abolitionists, in particular Eliza Wiggum, who took self-freed American slave Frederick Douglass up to Arthur's seat to carve political messages in 1840. So could the corporate body also look at the suggestion by the Scottish Women's History Group of an engraved flagstone outside Parliament with a view up to Arthur's seat as a fitting tribute to Eliza and her sister abolitionists? Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think the, uh, the, the request that Elaine Smith's made in terms of the, um, the main hall in the Parliament is a reasonable one. Obviously, for member-sponsored exhibitions, that's, um, that, that's really impractical on the basis that it's the public space rather than um, the space that's accessed by, uh, by members uh, routinely. But nevertheless, I think the, the point she makes in relation to International Women's Day is a reasonable one. I think in terms of the engraving, I, I wouldn't want to give her uh, a response uh, at this precise moment in that I think there are uh, rules and procedures and protocols around that and the basis that, she, as you'll exp um, I, I think, know uh, only too well, the Parliament is in receipt of many uh, applications uh, to commemorate a, a variety of very worthy uh, causes. But nevertheless, I'll make sure that uh, the proposal that she's put to us uh, this afternoon is given due consideration a full response provided. Question number five, Alison Harris. Thank you. 
to ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what support it provides to allow constituency offices to pay invoices by direct debit in order to take advantage of available discounts. Jackson Carlaw. Can I thank Alison Harris for her question and say that although we're not currently able to pay individual members' invoices by direct debit from the corporate body's central bank account, we do provide support to members who have set up direct debits on their personal bank accounts by reimbursing them through scheduled payments. This ensures that they have the monies in their account in advance of the direct debit being paid by their bank and enables them to take advantage of any available discounts. However, and I wouldn't want this to cause a rush of blood to the member's head, we are currently evaluating the possibility of implementing a direct debit payment facility from the SPCB's bank account for members' local office utility bills and aim to pilot that later this year. Alison Harris. I have no further questions. Thank you. I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. That is such a welcome response, Ms Harris. And I think it's probably a first for this parliament. <laughs> uh, question number six, Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what measures it takes, especially during inclement weather, to ensure that the garden lobby floor is as safe as possible for staff and visitors. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, to make the garden lobby as safe as possible, we have barrier mats at all the entrances to the Parliament, and from October through to April, when more inclement weather is likely, we'll increase the number of barrier mats. The mats are designed to help prevent dirt and moisture being walked into the building. Uh, the mats are removed every two weeks for laundry and immediately replaced. In addition, where there is heavy rain, the janitorial team will do more regular checks of the garden lobby. In order to prevent any build-up of grit or dust, the garden lobby floor is cleaned on a nightly basis. This is done between the hours of 1 and 2 a.m. to ensure that the area is completely dry before the building opens. Janitorial staff also respond immediately to any reported spillages anywhere in the building. Alexander Stewart. Thank the member for the answer. Uh, he may be aware that during the day of the Doris uh, Bad weather, uh, presiding officer, uh, with the storm, uh, my own secretary found herself a victim uh, to coming through the garden lobby uh, and falling uh, at that location. Uh, can I ask that uh, in future maybe risk assessments are put in place uh, and that signage could be thought about? I'm sure this is not the first time someone may have had that type of incident, but I have to put on record the support she received uh, from the janitorial staff uh, and from the security staff who dealt with first aid and then took her to A&E. Uh, and I think that that proved that when there was a situation like that, that there was opportunities for people to support uh, and to ensure that the individual was supported. Thank you. David Stewart. Uh, President officer, obviously I'm very sorry to hear that a member of uh, Mr Stewart's staff had a fall and I'm sure we all wish her a very quick uh, recovery. We of course keep our procedures under review and uh, Mr Stewart's already given us a couple of very good ideas which are obviously passed through uh, to officials and uh, obviously we also encourage uh, staff and members to make sure that if there's any spillages or problems with the garden lobby that we use the uh, facilities management helpline and make sure that they are told immediately so that staff can action the issues and again uh, please pass on my regards to your member staff. And a quick supplementary, Christine Graham. Yes, can I thank Alexander Stewart for this question, because it isn't just a matter of wet floors. There are surfaces within this building, particularly for women wearing court shoes, which are always slippy, and there have been a few near misses and falls. And I wonder what assessment has been made of the general floor area uh, for shoes in this area, not just when it's wet. David Stewart. Uh, I think the member makes uh, a useful point. Clearly, there's different surfaces in the Parliament, uh, particularly the Kemeny granite surface uh, it appears to have had more reported slip accidents uh, than other floor surfaces. We obviously take these slip accidents uh, very seriously. Uh, obviously, I'm not responsible for the footwear of the member, but I would hope that uh, we are looking very carefully to ensure um, that there isn't any slips because we have, a, we have a duty of care as employers to make sure that we live in a safe environment. That ends Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body questions. Thank you, everyone. And we'll move on to the next item of business.